Hi, welcome to Acid and Bases Part 2. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about the Arrhenius definition of acids. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the Arrhenius definition of acids, of course, Arrhenius acids, the nature of the hydrogen ion, polyprotic acids, and naming Arrhenius acids. So let's start off first by talking about the definition of an Arrhenius acid. The Swedish chemist Svante Arrhenius investigated the nature of electrolytes. In other words, substances that conduct electricity when dissolved in water in the late 1800s. Arrhenius determined that electrolytes ionize when they dissolve in water. This means that electrolytes separate into positive and negative ions, or charged particles. These ions are free to move in the water. So an example of something that is an electrolyte could be something like sodium chloride. So NaCl, a solid, can break down in water to form sodium ions and chloride ions. And these ions are free to move and therefore, because they are charged particles, they can conduct electricity. Since acids are electrolytes, they must ionize in water, in other words, break apart into positive and negative ions. Arrhenius observed that when acids ionize, they all form the hydrogen ion, H plus one, as the only positive ion. So for example, HBr, hydrobromic acid ionizes or breaks down into its ions in the following manner. HBr liquid, when it is added to water, will break down into hydrogen ions and bromine ions in a one-to-one -one ratio because we know that there is one mole of HBr present in this equation. Let's look at another example, H3PO4, otherwise known as phosphoric acid. When phosphoric acid ionizes in water in a theoretical situation considering full ionization, we will get hydrogen ions and phosphate ions. PO4 minus 3, both aqueous. So we're going to put a little AQ here and a little AQ here. Now, there's one PO4 here, therefore one PO4 here, but to have a fully balanced equation here, we need to put a 3 in front. This is showing phosphoric acid undergoing full ionization. Not all substances that contain hydrogen are acids, and this is really important to understand. Organic molecules such as methane, CH4, do not ionize and therefore are not electrolytes nor acids. There exists a class of acids known as organic acids, uh, which we can find on table, table R of your reference table, that yield hydrogen when they dissociate. So something like CH3COOH, which is known as ethanoic acid in an organic sense, acetic acid, on your reference table, and more commonly known as vinegar, this is a type of organic acid because we see this Ku group here, COOH. When acetic acid or ethanoic acid breaks down in water, this hydrogen right here is our acidic hydrogen. This is the hydrogen that's going to dissociate into hydrogen ions, and then we have that acetate ions on the end. Now remember, this is the more organic way of representing the acetate ion. We've also seen the acetate ion represented as C2H3O2-1. They are the same way, they are just represented differently, so don't get confused by that. But this is an organic acid breaking down into hydrogen ions and the acetate ion. Let's talk about the nature of the hydrogen ion. Since the hydrogen atom atom, where we know that protons equal electrons, consists of one proton and one electron. The hydrogen ion, therefore, if it loses its one electron, is just a proton. Many chemists believe that a proton cannot exist alone in a water solution. These chemists believe that the proton forms a coordinate covalent bond with a water molecule to form the hydronium ion. H3O plus 1. If you have forgotten about the hydronium ion, you can always go to reference table E. So let's see how that works. We have a hydrogen ion, and we're basically saying that can't exist alone in a water solution. So how does a hydrogen ion hook up with a neutral water molecule? Well, remember that water is H2O. It is bent 
it has two lone pairs. And we know the hydrogen here is positive. And we know that these lone pairs are made up of electrons and they are negative. So what happens here, basically, is that our water molecule right here, O, H, H, with its lone pair right here, this hydrogen ion right here basically says, oh look, I'm positive, your lone pairs are negative, I'm just going to snuggle up next to you, so there's my hydrogen, I'm going to put brackets around the whole thing, but I'm going to carry that positive charge with me because we know that water is neutral, therefore the hydronium ion as a whole has a plus one charge. And this right here, this is that coordinate covalent bond, so we're going to represent that as CCB a coordinate covalent bond, which is a very specific type of bond that exists between the lone pair of one molecule and another ion. So that is a coordinate covalent bond and is found in hydronium ions. An acid can also be defined as a substance that ionizes in water to produce the hydronium ion as the only positive ion. The ionization of hydrochloric acid, HCl, in water can be written in two different ways. We can have HCl liquid, we put that in water, and we can have hydrogen ions and chloride ions. In this example, water is not included, not included, but assumed, but assumed. The hydrogen ion is formed and indicates the presence of an acid. The chloride ion is also represented as another product. Then we have this situation right here, HCl liquid plus water. And then we have the water up here again, which we really don't need. We form the hydronium ion and the chloride ion. In this example, the water is included in the equation to show how the hydronium ion is formed. Again, the chloride ion is also represented as another product. The big thing to realize here is that both of these are considered acidic solutions. Whether we see the presence of the hydrogen ion here or the hydronium ion here as a product, both of these situations says in the equation that it is acidic. Therefore, the hydrogen ion and the hydronium ion are essentially the same, and both indicate the presence of an acid in an aqueous solution. Now let's talk about polyprotic acid. Remember that poly means many, protic means proton, so these are many proton acids. Some acids are able to produce more than one hydrogen ion when they ionize. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, can ionize to produce two hydrogen ions, theoretically. So H2SO4 liquid in water can form two hydrogens and a sulfate ion if it ionizes completely. Another example could be carbonic acid. H2CO3 can break down in water to form two hydrogen ions and the carbonate ion, CO3 minus 2. So both of these are examples of polyprotic acids. Now let's talk about naming Arrhenius acids, and this is pretty straightforward. The formulas and names of some common acids are given on table K, right here. The formulas of acids can be recognized because they begin with the element hydrogen. Organic acids are the exception. They can be identified because these acids end with COOH, our Ku group. We've already talked about hydrochloric acid. Nitrous acid, we haven't talked about that much. Nitric is a good one to know. Sulfurous, not that much. Sulfuric, phosphoric, carbonic, and ethanoic slash acetic acid. This is our organic acid example. So what did you learn in this tutorial? We went over the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases. We talked about Arrhenius acids. We talked about the nature of the hydrogen ion, polyprotic acids, and a little bit about naming Arrhenius acids at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.